is up, y'all? Welcome to another episode of the Real Pain Talks of PSC. So, had a question, and I thought I would run that on this episode tonight. Um, and the question was, what to expect your first year in business working for yourself? And that's a great question because there are so many variables and so many different things that you can think about and that could happen. Um, in your first year. So first and foremost, like I've said in my other podcast, guys, always, always, always remember that it's all about getting good at your craft because that craft is your product. It becomes the sale, right? It's the, it's everything. So that end product is really, no matter what you're doing, like I've always said, if you're just painting baseboards or you're doing a touch up at a job or somebody calls you just to do a few little, you know, wall repairs or this or that, it all comes down to how you execute that. Um, and that's really going to kind of, in your first year, that's really going to be very important. Because in your first year, there's so many different things that you're, you're going to be going at. Um, and it all really depends, like, once again, on variables of how you've come into this first year. So me, for example, I would always try and tell people, go work for a company, a good company if you can, for at least five years. Learn your craft, hone in on your craft, learn a broad range of, of whether it's painting or whatever you're going to do, learn as much of it as you can. And then if there's something that you're specializing in, like us, for example, we really got into the um, the fine finish lacquer spraying. It wasn't because that's the, the, the route we chose. It was just because that was the work we were doing the most at the time. We were still painting walls and ceilings in these houses, but a majority of the houses that we were doing when we were learning were full-size, um, big shacks with lots of paneling, lots of spraying, millwork packages, um, grand staircases, all that kind of jazz. Um, and that... That's that's a lot of work, so you get a lot of practice. Um, but I'm really glad that I didn't just jump into it. You know, I did see some guys um, at the time that were maybe jumping the gun and getting into it a little too soon, you know. Maybe they put two, three years in, and they think, okay, I can go and do this now. I'm, I'm just going to go on my own. And like I said, it comes back to those variables again of, you know, maybe maybe there's an abundance of work where you are and the company you're working for is extremely busy, but you see other companies around that are extremely busy that could even use the services of the company you work for, but you see there's an opportunity, well, you know what, I could branch out, I could do this on my own. And that could go very well and that could go not so well. So what I always try and tell people is, like I said, really get good at what you do and then you kind of got to dip into it you want to go strong, but you don't want to go too strong because growing too fast, growing your company too fast can really hurt your company too if you're not prepared. And take it from me, there's so many different variables. Like I said, I'm going to use that word a lot because that's the most important part of it. You can't pinpoint it all the time. It's not the same for everybody. Some guys start out their first, second year and they, they do very well. Other people struggle. I do think it is your area, demographics, stuff like that, right? Um, That's really going to play a big part into how you can establish your business that first year. And if I could give advice that I didn't have or know when I started, it would be, you know, while you're working up to say maybe start your own company and get out on your own, bankroll. Bankroll is important. And then next would be having the right people along with you. That's also very important because... A quick little sidebar on that is like while you're growing it's hard sometimes to help other people grow say like the rookies or the guys that are just learning that can be hard because you're going to be spending a lot of time sort of for lack of a better word babysitting but actually better yet teaching somebody to do this so it's profitable for you both because if you're just going to spend spend time and money wasted trying to teach somebody, then you've got to be very precise on the jobs you're getting and how you're quoting them because that can be potentially harmful for a business. So what you want to do is you kind of want to establish yourself a little bit ahead of the game. If you know, like, hey, this January I'm coming out, you kind of want to have all your ducks in a row. Maybe have contractors or guys that you know you can call and depend on that maybe you've been, you know, touching base with over time to see if you're setting up like a you can set up a good crew of people that you know you can do these jobs well because like I said back to that end result it's all about that end result that's the sale that's what people are going to be calling you for or calling you back for right so the first year you're going to expect a lot of 
trial and error. Be nervous. You're going to be nervous. I don't mean be nervous. You're going to be a little bit nervous, but you might not be. Like I said, it comes back to those variables. Maybe you just have the abundance of work. You're confident in yourself. You're confident in your systems. And if that's the case, then as I've talked before in other episodes, it comes down to the other systems that can help you grow. If you're the guy that needs to be there, like for example, with me and my company, majority of the time, I'm the last guy through essentially because of all the fine finish lacquer spraying that some guys, you know, maybe it's me and maybe I'm a little bit picky, but there's only a select few that I can really leave to do those last finish coats, especially on big doors and big built-ins and stuff like that. It can be nitpicky. I have a great system for myself. I have good rhythm in it. Sometimes it's just easier for them to prime or do first coat and then I do those final finish coats. But my point to that is that if you have to be that guy most of the time and you're the workhorse, you might be getting other people to do other stuff. So implementing other systems to help you grow, right? So that might be something you want to look in in your first year too. But the bankroll and having those sales is probably more important than that. So like I said, back to the variables, if you're, if you have a ton of work that's coming toward you or in our, in our sense, when we were starting and when we were learning, we were learning from a company And over time, they said, well, you know, if we get busy enough, we could sub this out to you and you could do it partially on your own, which is what happened. So you get good enough and then, you know, you get some of your own tools, you get your stuff going, you get whatever it is, your corporation or or if you're sole proprietor or whatever it may be, a couple of machines, some hand tools, and you're kind of ready to go. Depending where you are, always make sure you're following all the right rules and regulations. Here, you need WCB, maybe some liability insurance, be a corporate company, GST number, all those types of things you might want to look into even before you get out there and always pay your taxes. 195% always pay your taxes because that is essential to running a business. It's part of life. It's part of the system. So just know that. And then also know this. If you don't like doing touch-ups, don't be a painter. It's part of the game. You have to do it. So unless you're going to you know, hire out for that or have somebody designated to that, fine. But know that that's always going to be there because it is, we're in a service industry. Whether or not we're tradies, we're still servicing people. So, but like I said, guys, back to the the first year, these are the types of things you really want to think about. You want to think about, you know, do I have enough bankroll to keep me going? Should I maybe be the one-man show for a while, start off slow, maybe getting into repaints? But like I said, maybe you have, um, work that can, is coming toward you already, which is maybe bringing you to um, get into the game on your own. But that's the thing. Don't jump the gun because if you do that too quick and you're not prepared, it can really hurt your company. It can crush companies. Growing too fast can really hurt a company sometimes because, you know, for a while there in my career with my company, it, it became a little bit hard because we're not set up to do um, mass volume in terms of, Tons of repaints, tons of shop work, plus the custom homes. We're not set up that way. We're more set up to do, you know, one to two custom homes at a time. You know, a few of those through the year, depending how big they are, right? So the way that the structure is set up is maybe you have guys that you can bring back when you need them. Then they go do their own thing, right? We keep it kind of small. No matter how long we've been going for now, we've been keeping it small. I tried to go big, you know. And not that I had to try. It was like, it's if you want it, you can do it. Uh, depending where you are, like I said, with demographic, if you're busy enough and you have the work coming, you can easily grow into a big company. Just make sure you have a very strong backbone of a system and not just a business system, the painting system, the system where you know, okay, this is how it needs to go. This is how it needs to flow because that's the most important, especially it was uh, with the custom homes. When I first got into painting, at least here in Calgary, um, we're, we're pretty wealthy off the oil business. You know, there's some big, big houses out here. Comparative to the States, mm, probably maybe half the size of some of those homes, right? Like out in the States, you probably got, you know, and I shouldn't just say the States, other parts of the world, all over, there's some very big houses. But here, I think the biggest house I've been in, worked in, was almost 18,000 square feet. So that's a fair size. That's a fair size. But you're not busy with them all the time there's some pretty big shacks but when i first started kind of getting into the game right when i was fresh getting into painting i worked in for a production company painting production homes and some of these guys didn't even know these houses existed 
even my uncle who was in the game for like 20 plus years and i always be like no like seriously like there's like we're painting these huge mansions where he's an italian guy what are these mansions i'm like no seriously like out in like bears pond no they don't exist and they never thought like until you know we would show them pictures and we'd come back and show them and they'd be like oh my god but my point to that is that a lot of those kinds of production painters they would have no clue where to start in a custom home right so that's another thing you got to think about what do you want to do what have you been what have you been taught what do you know what can you achieve what can you accomplish without tarnishing your name um because that's important you don't you don't want to throw yourself under the bus like what can you do with it you know what systems do you have so like i said you got to have a great painting system for whatever it is you're doing like i said i'm not trying to pull favorite on the custom game because i did production homes for almost two years when i first started out that's how i got really good at prepping you know because it's like you got to be good at dapping you got to be good at filling holes and you got to be able to do it all fast so when i got into the custom game i already had some of these skills and tricks and techniques from the production side that really helped me with my custom game but essentially it's like not to favor that it's just mostly saying that if that's what you're going to get into make sure you have the right system for that if you're doing production homes make sure you have the right systems for that and quick little examples would be like say if you're doing a if you're doing custom homes at least for us they're big estate homes they're pretty secured locked down so we can leave a lot of our tools on site which is what we do but if i was in the production game i might think about getting like a little trailer and keep my compressor in the trailer keep all the stuff and run the hoses to the house just pull the trailer up to the to the door or something like that because a lot of these houses are still under development you know and like new communities and stuff like that so that would be one example of like different systems you want to think that way because with us you got bigger compressors in the custom game but you can leave them there with the production game it's like maybe you're doing three houses a week you're moving three times a week so you want to think about stuff like that you want to be prepared for things that um, like I said, stuff that I would have never thought of would have been s- stuff like that, you know, and also being prepared for clients, um, especially if you're trying to win work, if there's a lot of competition. So being prepared for clients, some, a good example of that would be like trying to think one step ahead. So you're not always having to ask all these questions or maybe this or maybe that. Oh, so what do you think? So it's just like knowing, OK, it's going to be this It's going to be like this. Do you have this? Do you have this? Do you have that? So they're like, it's like straight to the point. They want to know that they can rely on you no matter what it is. So say if you're in the repaint game, you know, it's being one step ahead, being courteous, you know, being um, courteous to their time, to their space. Maybe you split it up. Maybe you plan it different. Maybe you don't bring so many tools. Maybe you have those tools set up in totes or something like that. And, and it's a lot more clean. It's a lot more tidy in and out. You know, there's the drop sheet game. So uh, I mean, I've, ta- I've talked about it in my dollar store companies, but there are guys that probably come in and don't even bring, bring friggin' drop sheets. They just come in, wham, bam. Maybe you're a drop sheet guy when it comes to repaints. Maybe you're a poly guy. So, you know, different systems and thinking about that before you get into these jobs. Because like I said, it comes back to that overall product. And with that overall product, there's going to be a like a good, easy, practical way to get there or there's going to be a long, hard way to get there, right? So you want to be pr- be prepared for these things because some clients you never know what they're going to get you but the only i can't stress this enough but the only way to really get there well is through experience and time which is why i always tell people you know when they message me well what what do you what should i expect my first year and they're like how long you been doing it for well i've been doing it maybe three four years i'm like and you're going out on your own well, yeah, I mean, I think I can do it and stuff. It's like, okay, yeah, um, yeah, okay. Well, think about this, 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 and this. You know, and and that was why I came, that's why I did the dollar store episode, um, the dollar store company episode, because guys are jumping the gun, like I was saying. They think now they can just get all the marketing, they can get the gear, they can get all the most amazing tools. <sighs> Frick, some of these guys are already getting sponsorships from spray companies and stuff like that. And they don't even really know how to work them or how to put them to work. You know, or even if they're getting the right machine for that job, you know, they're eating with their eyes. Like I was saying, they're just like, oh man, look what I can, I can get this job right now and this and that. And it's like, maybe sometimes they're undercutting because they're doing it less because they're a one man show. Who knows? Not saying the one man shows do that. Just those are different variables. So, and those are all variables that you'd probably have to think about your first year of coming out, you know, like what kind of jobs are you going to be doing? What are you going to be getting? How are you going to be getting them? 
you know? And then, then after, how are you going to be tracking them? How are you going to be logging them? How are you going to be getting paid? How is everyone else going to be getting paid? You know, it's, there's a lot of stuff to think about. And then it comes back to that leverage game. Like, okay, you've got to leverage this job possibly. Okay, did you do your numbers right? Boom, back to the 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 um, the pricing and, and estimating part of it. That was one thing that took the longest. Because, you know, even when guys are like, oh, you know, I'm a contractor, you're a subcontractor, you're never going to know my pricing. They're like waving in their face, you know, and you're like, okay. So that kind of pissed me off a little bit when people would do that because it's like, oh, like everyone's like this big secret. Well, technically it's not. If you listen to the uh, the episode of uh, pricing and estimating that I put out, essentially that's what it is. It's going to be whatever. If that guy over there wants to work for this much and you want to work for this much, then that's that's fine. So it's not really like, oh, you're not going to know my pricing. It's like, well, I don't need to know your pricing. I need to figure out my own goddamn pricing. So that's one piece of advice um, that I couldn't stress enough as well is know your numbers, know where you stand. And it all comes back to that um, knowing knowing where you stand with what you can provide um, through what you can do with your hands, right? How good are you? How, how well can you execute this? And then, like I said, always the variables because the hardest thing you're going to find when you're first coming out, and this is what I find a lot of people do, is they don't know how to, they don't know how to clearly evaluate what that project needs. You always want to do the best job. Yeah, you're just coming out. You got the gear, you got everything. Yeah, you got to do the best job, best job. And then some guys are doing such a good job because they're getting in their own heads and then they're losing money because they can't figure out like, man, I don't know why I'm losing on this. This job looks immaculate. But yeah, man, you only got paid like a grand and you put like five grand worth of time into it. That's why you're not making any money, but it's got to be good. Okay, maybe you need to step back for a minute and get really good so that if a job is two grand, you can still execute it really well and, and still put a little bit less time and effort into it because I'm not saying like people need to be cutting corners and this and that, but it goes to show that, well, commercial is a good example. And all the commercial guys that do commercial painting, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I definitely do think that you can do a very good job fast, but it's never going to be as good as a different caliber of say like a high end home because it's different calibers and people are expecting different things. And if you've been in that game for 20, 30 years, sometimes you don't see the difference until you get out of it and go see, you know, like I've dipped into commercial and I've butted heads even a couple times. I've had good experiences and I have bad experiences and the bad experiences are based on me being like, I've come from custom homes. This shit should be immaculate. And they're like, no, this, no, no, that's, you're going way overboard, bro. Or they don't see it. And they're just like, this looks like crap. And you're like, why why you guys do it like this? It's like, wow. But back to being able to evaluate what that project needs and then if you can get it for your price and you can hit it on the head, then awesome. And that's where the under, undercutting comes in sometimes because these guys are like, fine, we can we can make it look like shit for less. I'm like, sweet, that guy was going to make it look like shit for a little bit more. This guy's going to make it look like shit for less. Or it doesn't need to look like shit. It needs to look in the middle. But you know what I mean? It's knowing how to evaluate that because that's the biggest thing I see guys doing in the beginning too. How do you make any money? And it's like, well, you got to be careful. That's where that, go back to that pricing. Like I said, there's your price, your estimate, and your cost. That cost is super important. Like I said, I don't have an MBA. I don't have an accountant. I'm not all this. I just ran my company for 10 plus years. All I know is that that was most important. You know, I don't got to get technical. I tried to keep it really simple because that cost is really going to dictate what you want to work for and then what that job is entails so if say if you go and you get you know a a repaint and the guy says i just want this this this, isn't this done you say like okay like this is already pretty good or 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 there's a lot of damage we got to fix this we got to fix that so you say you give them a quote you got to make sure you fall your timeline and your labor and all that falls in in that in that number right i know you want to go overboard and that's why i didn't like the repaint game myself sometimes because sometimes you're putting in a price because you're like, look at all this damage I got to fix, you know, because you're doing something else. Like we usually do the custom game. So it's like, oh, it's got to be like this, you know, and then you're like, wait, that guy's not, they're not going to notice it like that. 
they just want it repainted. It's just like a house where they live. It's not this extravagant home they've dropped $50 million into or whatever it might be or these, you know, these huge commercial buildings. So I don't really like that. So you kind of got to be able to judge that because that's what's going to be most important is knowing how to execute the job, period. Yeah, there's nothing more to that. More knowing how to execute the job because you could really lose money trying to overdo it right in the beginning. So here's how I kind of started learning this and referencing this because when I went to start hiring people, and this is another thing you're going to notice, when you go to start to hire people, everyone's wage is going to be dependent on what they think they should make. Um, But it doesn't always come down to that. It's going to come down to what they can actually provide. So here's a great example of why there's different variables for different places like commercial production, industrial, um, high-end cabinet shop stuff. There's always different prices, different systems that make up for those prices. So, and, and the most important thing is knowing where you stand in that. Because if you don't, then it's really going to be hard to make some good profit if you're always going overboard when you don't need to, but you're not going to get jobs if you're doing less than what's expected. So that's hard. So like, like I was saying back to this, when I was hiring, um, this guy says, you know, um, I'd like to make 25 bucks an hour. And I said, okay, so can you caulk? Like, can you dap and can you prep? And can you tape? Cause that's nine to five. Most of the week, that's what we're doing. Sometimes we have repaint jobs, but most of the time we're a spray crew. Yep, yep, can do all that, do all that, do all that. Like, what were you doing before? Oh, man, I was priming out production homes. I was crushing these houses by the hour. And I would get bonuses if I finished a certain amount in the week. And I was like, damn, you're making good money. He was like, yeah, I was. I was making 25 bucks an hour. So I'm like, okay. So, I mean, one doesn't really have anything to do with the other because one's um, um, woodwork prep and one's just rolling primer out on walls and production homes. So... He comes in, does a few things. I can see he cannot caulk. He does not know how to dab. But he's saying like, man, but I'm this. I'm still worth 25 bucks an hour. That's what I was making before. I'm like, yeah, that's what you were making over there. But that guy, that's a perfect example, is running his system off volume. So he knows that, you know, he can pay you 25 bucks an hour because that's all you're doing. You're doing like 20, 30 of them a freaking month. Yeah, you can make, you can make 25 bucks an hour doing that. But with me, it's like, if I'm not getting something out of you for what I need, then sorry, you're not actually worth 25 bucks an hour to me. You might be, but for what I need, no. So that's a tough thing, right? Because it goes back to the same thing of those jobs. It's like that job, you might only need a certain caliber on that job. So be careful with that, guys, because if you overdo it, then you got to be able to know when to call it quits. You got to be able to know when to kind of walk away, do your best, your best, and then walk away. But if you're getting paid to do more than your best, then you better follow through and give them the best. And unless it be confusing, but if you got to follow through and give them the best and be the best, you have to know how to get to being the best. Oh, so what I mean by that is like always honing on your craft, guys. Take courses, do do different things, practice. You know, if you're doing more side jobs, just that's more practice. But it's really know where you stand because that's how you're going to pitch yourself and sell yourself when you're coming out that first year. Um, and I wish you the best coming out that first year because I said there's going to be a lot of different variables. So imagine having a small family at the same time as that. You know, there's a different mind frame right there. It's that hunger, it's that drive. You're probably going to do a little bit more. But don't beat yourself down either. I mean, don't take that from me because I work a ton. But I also have a little bit of a different character. I'm a calmer guy. I'm okay being alone sometimes. I can work by myself. I can grind. Um, I'm okay with my thoughts. Uh, and that matters. Because some guys, they just can't do They got to really got to be working or doing something. or be, You know, like, I go, oh, man, I'm good. I'll stand, you know. But it's like I, I'm always thinking about the game while I'm painting. Like we were saying on the one podcast there with Donnie um, taking lunch money. When you're there, be there. Don't just be pacing around, you know, doing half-ass work for eight hours. Like think about it. If you want to get to making the best money, you got to be the best. And whatever you guys think the best is, I know a lot of guys are like, well, what's the, you know, it's like, I just mean get really good at what you do because that's what you're going to be selling yourself. Like that's what you're selling, Right. So like I said, first year, really have, you know, the business model, the business um, 
like what you're projecting pre-think about a lot of that stuff sit down and be like okay you know i need this if i'm going to get this many jobs set goals for yourself um know the clientele that you're going after um and like they say in sales the best thing to do is know your competition so you know a lot of guys in the beginning here's a little trick i mean this might be a little shysty but not because when i don't when i'm not painting and i go home and i'm buying other stuff or i'm doing this or that i'm a consumer as well so if I don't know something like, oh, man, I need all this, all these brick walls painted. Nobody wants to give you the price on that, of course, because some painters don't want to do that. Why would they want to do that? So if you need a price on that and you know the square footage, call a company, tell them the square footage, get the price from them. That'll help you, you know, stay competitive in the market and know where you sort of stand. Only if you know what you can provide. If you see what they're getting um, from that company or that company and you can't give that and don't try and be more expensive just because you want to make more money because that's foolish too i see a lot of guys do that don't do that ego either don't do that either guys because you don't want to be painting with your ego um until you can really back it up because um that can hurt you that can really hurt your your reputation it can hurt uh a lot of things actually so don't do that, guys. Know, know your skill, hone in on your craft, and then you can go out there and you can really pitch that to people well. Um, and then you could probably make some pretty good money doing it. But like I said, if you need to know certain things, you actually just have to live through it. Um, experience is, is going to be the number one. And like I said, if, if, you, if you get into it and, uh, you know, you can paint 3,000 homes a year because there's, you know, big communities going up where you are and you can do production homes or or, you know, you're slaying massive, you know, commercial buildings and you can have 10, 12 guys. That's awesome. Just make sure you always have your ducks in a row. Um, here's a huge piece of advice. Coming from having lots of guys to a smaller, stronger crew, I've found this. Actually, two pieces of advice, especially when it comes to, like, scheduling, too. Well, here's one for scheduling. Um, wait two to four days. So if you're like, oh, this job's going to start. Oh, man, this could be good. We don't know for sure yet. Don't even freaking start thinking about it or counting on it. Wait two to four days. Shit can change. Sometimes it changes for the good. You're worried, I'm not going to get that job. Then you start thinking about the other job that you started or that you have, and you start rearranging. It's like don't count your chickens before they hatch 100%. Do not do that Um, because then you're just setting yourself up, and then you're losing focus on what's in front of you right now. So... Don't always count on that, right? Don't don't jump the gun. And another piece of advice, this is something that I always do. I always, I take on, like, we're a four-man plus crew sometimes, depending. Sometimes I have some contractors. Sometimes I just hire on help um, to up the number in the crew. If we just need more hands for sanding or filling or whatever it might be, that's what I'll do sometimes. But I always make sure I don't take on more than what I can finish with me and say, I know my right hand guy, like he's never going to leave me. But if everyone ups and fucks off, then it's like, oh man, like I, I never like to take on more than I can't finish myself. But once again, that comes back to the system of what I'm doing. I've been in the custom game, like companies kind of been molded into that. You know, if it comes down to like two, three guys with one house, then we're set up for that. If, if, if it comes to like, I need 10 guys and I'm set up for that. But it's more just like, I would never want to have mass, mass amounts of work and be really worried on how to get all these guys. Some people are really good at that. But with what we're doing in the fine finish end, at least here in Calgary, it's really hard to find good help. Um... And I hope I'm not offending anyone in the city because I know there's probably a ton of painters out there um, and good painters, but you know how the saying goes. It's like, well, at least what we used to say here, if you're good, you're working, you know? So it's not like you got the good guys sitting around at home waiting for me to, you know, find them. Um, so it's tough. Um, there's a lot of competition here. So, and that's another thing. Be careful. Cause if you're in a place where the demographic is, is there's really tight competition. There's not a lot of work and a lot of guys fighting for it you got to be on, you got to be aces. Because if you're not, then you're going to come in. And a lot of guys, that's why they stay one-man crew because it's a lot easier to handle. And they might just be getting smaller jobs for now. I know it sucks, but you might just be getting the scraps until you can establish yourself as a company. So that's, you know, another piece of advice. Really work hard on your reputation. Always go back for your touch-ups. Always 
call people back, you know, in terms of business, you know, um, and I know it's hard. I know it's busy and I'm, I'm sure we're all guilty for it, but do your best for that because your clients and the people that, you know, eventually end up paying you for your service. Um, those are the people that mean the most, um, you, you know, still, you know, be firm, you know, keep your feet on the ground. Don't let anyone push you around or use you. Cause I find with the, the new housing game, um, the touch-ups can be a lot. So you got to think about that too, right? Um, when I do repaints, I mean, not to toot my own horn, toot toot, but I don't really get calls back. But I think that should be, you know, um, maybe another segment to this or or another episode all on itself. But touch-ups can range from so many different things. And what, what we want to do is we never want to have a touch-up. We want to try and do that job so good that there's no touch-ups. We want to try and get everything. If it's a repaint, we try and get everything with the client before we leave. You know, and if it's a, a new home, like that one we just did for our good friends at Rush Custom Projects there, um, pff, there wasn't even a punch-out list. That's how amazing that project went. That's how smooth the build went. There were probably some other things, like, you know, in the house um, with other, you know, problems. and Not problems, but, you know, other things that need, you know, the stuff getting ironed out but but for us at least it was very nice all the trades were very very respectful there wasn't a lot of damage sometimes you spend two weeks in a touch-up you know it depends on on the system so that being prepared for that and knowing that that's something that you got to think about um service service is 150 (laughs) percent well it's it's a it's everything because at the end of the day that's what you're there for Somebody needs their house painted, you're servicing them. And they're going to pay you for it, right, with their hard-earned money. So, you know, you want to u- use your hard-earned skills and your experiences, which is why I'm telling you not to not to dive in too hard in your first year. You know, if you have the work, cool, take it on, but be very careful. Have bankroll, have some leverage. Um, don't lose your shirt because at the end of the day, if you want to ha- get, you know, say residuals, you know, people coming back, say if you got contractors and stuff that are going to build multiple stuff and you have them coming back, um, or the repaint game where you, where people just hear about you be, because word of mouth is powerful. So in and around town, it's like, man, this guy, he slayed it for us. He did an amazing job. Word gets around, right? So that's what's very, very, very important, guys, is to make sure that at the end of the day, you're not jumping the gun too much. And I mean, you're probably going to be excited, you know, first year, you know, you got some gear, um, maybe you got some wicked sprayers, maybe you've seen some stuff and you want to test out your technique. Um, just know what you're doing, um, know what you're getting into, know your clients, know the type of work that you have to do and get into that demographic of knowing get into knowing your demographic because that's going to be very important especially when it comes to execution right because like i said once again guys all about the variables it's all about the variables there could be different variables for different things for different jobs depending on what you're getting so but if you are just starting out i do want to say congrats to you keep your head up you know when i first started my business a lot of people around said it's it takes about one to three years before you really start seeing you know some big waves happen you know if you're flatlined in the beginning if you're just making making it by and you're you know and um, you got some good sales and you got some good projects that's okay like i said don't jump the gun i have seen guys you know jump the gun and um and either fail right off the bat or do really well and then fail after you know like uh, we knew this one guy he was doing very well. Um, he had a few builders, um, very well. It was banking, uh, like making bank, and he had you know all the he had all the toys. What he didn't do though is he went, he didn't prepare for a bust. This is at a time where things were really good, and of course nobody thinks like oh there's not going to be a bust, especially in some in some economies like they're really strong. Um, even in just some smaller cities and towns, you know, guys can make a really good living, but always be prepared because you never know what can happen. Um, maybe if you have a family, take insurance out on yourself, uh, have all the insurance and stuff like that. Yeah, it costs, it costs you something, but it also, um, it'll help you sleep better at night sometimes, I think, especially if you have a wife and kids, um, or vice versa, protect yourselves, protect yourselves a lot, but I congratulate you and, um, and, and don't worry. It's, it's a great thing. 
it's there's nothing nothing feels better knowing that you know you can work for yourself and i i loved that about being an entrepreneur because i felt like even though it's sort of everyone sort of does have a boss and it, it always comes down to that almighty dollar it feels like don't let that rule you you know still make sure you know you can stick by the no that's what i always you know tell people there there's going to come a day where there's going to be a no we're going to have to say no because if you're going to lose then there's no point in doing it if oh but i really want that job well awesome you know that it happened to me there was a wicked job downtown huge daycare somebody reached out to me online um it was a huge day it was a huge job it would have been amazing for your portfolio you know a big daycare with a in a facility um one of the bottom of one of the skyscraper buildings here and uh it was really cool but i couldn't compete with the commercial painter you know there was a ton of vinyl draw or uh, vinyl wallpaper work in it tons of colors really cool for the kids you know what i mean it was a really cool spot i couldn't compete with the other guy's number because like i said it comes back to that system where i was like man he must have it dialed in they know the system if we go overboard a little bit too much even just a little bit, we're going to lose. So you got to know it. So I wasn't willing to test the waters on a $50,000 job that some guy could probably do for 30, you know? So I, I'm not, I wasn't willing on, on risking that and going into it like that. But like I said, it's exciting. It's exciting to know that you can come, you can get out there and you can kind of call the shots and, and, and work how you want to. And, um, and it can keep you happy or it can stress you the, out because um like i said first three years if if you want to set the company up nice and set yourself up nice you're going to be working a lot you're going to be working hard which i guess brings me to another part that i should say if you have a family um be fair to them if they're if they're your backbone you work that out with them and make sure that everyone's on the same page knowing that if you got to put an extra time because you're an entrepreneur um er everybody should know that uh because when i got together with my wife she knew that you know and she's my rock and she's my backbone as well as as my kids they support everything i do so if daddy's got to work saturday and sunday for the next four months um but daddy says well i'll take a week off here and a week off there then you make sure you do that and if you can't just try really hard you know maybe maybe delegate it differently set up different systems which is what i'm getting better at like i said guys i'm not perfect I really have to set up different systems now as I'm getting busier, especially with my Instagram and my inbox and a lot of the stuff that I'm doing now. Um, you have to delegate it right. But in the beginning, you're going to be working hard. And that's okay because you're going to be working hard for something that really is going to be yours. It's great to work and help other people grow. Um, and some people aren't entrepreneurs. That's just facts uh, and i'd hate to break it to you if you're one of those people but sometimes you're just better off maybe as a site leader um supervisor but at the end of the day when you want to go home and not think about it there's people like that too and that's okay because you can make great money doing that as well you don't not everyone needs to conquer the world maybe they want to conquer the world um in a different aspect in their life right so like i said you're gonna be working a lot don't kill yourself if it doesn't go well right away, be patient. Boom. That is the biggest one. Be patient. Good things come to those who wait, I promise. So be patient. You know, I had an amazing, amazing phone call come to me the other day um, from a guy in St. Louis Obispo and uh, slow painting. And he called me, um, Joe. And I, I thought maybe he wanted to call me just to maybe see what, you know, if he's seen something online or he wanted to, but he just called me because he seen that I was working on a Saturday and he wanted to reach out, you know, due to the times right now with the COVID and stuff like that. Um, some people can't work and, and, and my heart goes out to them and I hope them all the best. And I hope that wherever you are, that, that the, the, the con, the, the governments and all that, they can really help out these people who, who maybe aren't working. And, and I do wish the best for them. Um, and that's, that's a totally different subject for another time because, like I said, I, I really, truly hope that um, people see that I'm not insensitive to it. It's just you got to do what you got to do to make that money. So um, if you can still work, awesome. If you can't, my heart goes out to you, and I wish all the best for you. Um, but either way, so Joe called me from uh, from St. Louis Obispo, and, and he called me to say, 
hey, Danny, I just wanted to call and 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 see how you're doing and and just talk about you know um just seeing how you're doing because you know I, I noticed that that you're still working out there and I was kind of like, oh man, like is this gonna be like a man like you know you shouldn't be you shouldn't be throwing that in people's faces, which I haven't got a lot of that. I haven't got a lot of that at all. A, a couple of people maybe joke about it, but it's just we're following our real, rules and regulations, so it's like you know. I'm sorry, like, I have to. I got a wife and small kids. But either way, so he was saying, well, you know, that's what I thought it was going to be about. But it wasn't. He was more saying, you know, I see you work Saturdays and and that you're still busy, and, and, and that's good. And he's like, and I, but I think that's why, you know, maybe because, you know, you, you put these times in and, and you put that extra time. You do whatever it takes to grow your company. Because um, we do the same. He's like, I, I did the same, and I just want you to know that. He's like, I've been doing this for 35 years plus, and it's going to pay off. And that made me feel really good. Because like I say, guys, maybe for whatever you see on, on the Instagram, it's just a front, right? I mean, it's not a front, but you're seeing it as a, like a storefront. You know, that's the thing about the platform. You're seeing it that way. So, but it is a lot of hard work on the back end. And it just felt good to know that um, that other people seen that and to know that he was reminding me that it's going to pay off. And that's what I want to say to all you guys that are starting out as well. You know, I've only I've been in this for what sixteen years. Joe, he's been in it for uh, from slow painting. He's been in it for over thirty five, and many others that have been doing it for a long time, and and they're successful. But everything takes time and patience, so it will pay off. And thank you, Joe. Um, that was the kindest phone call I've got from anyone, especially on this platform. You know, it felt good to know that. You're going to spend maybe, and maybe you're going to spend a lot of time alone because I do sometimes work in weekends grinding. If the guys don't want to do it, you go, you got to make sure that job is done. You got to do whatever you can to build that company to keep your reputation strong. Um, and that's what you have to do sometimes. So in your first year, expect that a little bit, unless you just like what you're going to get and, and that's it. But you know, if you got to put the Saturdays and Sundays in, you're going to have to do that for a while. If you got a good, you know, support group, behind you like you know your family then you know you can make it happen do take time for yourself but it will pay off and and you know hearing that from a guy with 35 plus years in the game made me feel good and I hope that you know for all the people that have asked me this question which is why I did this episode that it will pay off if you're if you work hard you're smart save your money it will pay off in the long run for sure. So thank you, Joe. I really do appreciate that. I appreciated that call. I was blown away. Um, such a nice man. Uh, it was. It was. It was so good. It was reassuring to know that you know, um, because essentially, I, I felt like that I'm young right now. I'm my strongest right now. Um, so I want to do what I can right now to set the company up to hopefully be self-sustaining so maybe I can step back when I get older and, you know, pass the torch to somebody who might want to learn to do fine finish spraying. And if you do, message me up. That'd be sweet. If anybody in Calgary, you know, you ever want to apprentice or or learn from the top line, you know, I'm always looking for guys that um, you can pass the torch to, especially, you know, somebody younger, um, and, you know, I think this this could be its its own episode in itself because I do want to say, guys, sending this one out to all, you know, the, all the college guys, all the or maybe all the kids getting out of high school, they don't know what they want to do. You know, I know it's a digital, technical age, um, but trades are not dead. You can make good money doing a trade. You can make good money doing a trade, guys. So, you know, don't worry about that. Get into the trades if you want. Get into it because it, it, it can pay off. It can all pay off if you work hard. And uh, so I appreciated that from Joe. That's the same advice I'm going to give you guys. It'll be hard work, but it'll pay off, and and it does. So keep at it and don't give up because that's some of the stuff you're going to come across, you know, hard work, and and you'll be stuck or torn. It'll be the fork in the road, and you don't know what to do, but... Um, just persevere and work hard and be dedicated and headstrong and you can get through it right so maybe a quick little recap guys like i said the first year you're going to really want to get those pre-systems going maybe a little bit of bankroll work out if you need help or labor make sure you know that you can take all of that to execute jobs properly when you're starting to get jobs make sure you know the type of job you're getting make sure you know your clientele make sure you know what you need to provide on that job 
for that price, what caliber gets put on that job for that price, you know? Remember, guys, don't overdo it because if you're overdoing it because, you know, you're excited to be out there for your first year in business, that can hurt you. So make sure you're smart about that. Do your numbers, know your costs. And also, like I said, be prepared to work hard, really, really hard. Um, Also, protect yourself, get insured, make sure all your business, all your books, all your ducks are in a row. Um, And also, like I was saying, don't grow too, too fast. Be careful if you are. Make sure you have the right people and the right systems around you because that's really what's going to make or break you. Um, And all the while, have fun and love what you do. You know, like the saying goes, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. And it's true. Like, I I love what I do. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and I'm, like, thinking about what I have to spray today and I can't wait to get there because it's like I can throw my headphone in and it's like, boom, I can start spraying. And I love it, you know. And um, if you love it too, then then you can make good money and and you can succeed. But remember, like I said, maybe about one to three years. You know, don't, don't let that distract you. Just know that be headstrong. One to three years of hard work and, 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 and you can set yourself on your company up to do, to do very, very well. So if that's what you're doing and you're just first out there, I wish you the best. Wish you the best. Like I said, if you're not and you're thinking about it, maybe give it time. Work for a company for at least five years. Learn your shit. Know your shit before you get out there and you start looking like a dumbass. So don't do that, guys. Know your shit. Know your worth. And... um and be good to one another and stay safe. Like I said, with this COVID going on, everybody stay safe. And thanks for joining in to another episode of Real Pain Talks with PSC. Much love.